Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get on a plane and travel first to London, England, then to Bergen in Norway. Um, I'm going to do something. I'm going to have a trip that we of the travel industry always sneer at. One of these ridiculous trips where people deliberately plan to visit as many destinations as is possible. My original purpose was to go to a small town, practically a village in rural Norway, and um, it sort of grew from there. I decided, well, since I have to connect in London, England, why don't I just tool around London for a day? I know the city reasonably well, but I haven't been there for an actual walk around for quite a while. Um, I've never been to Bergen, so I thought, well, I'll spend a day there. Uh, then I go to my ultimate destination, a small town in the middle of nowhere, and then I go back via Oslo, spend a day there, and then back to Copenhagen, spend a day there. It's really the sort of thing that if you're used to traveling, you tend to ridicule people for, from, for doing. How the hell do you expect to actually form any coherent uh, opinion or even view or idea of a place you're going to if you spend one day there, especially a city the size of London, although, I, again, I've been to London quite a few times. Um, it's kind of silly what I'm doing, but um, in the airline industry, you can so arrange these things, um, and there is a purpose for the trip. I'm going to visit family, but um, while I'm there... Because I have a limited amount of time, I want to jam as much enjoyment into it as is humanly possible. Now, it may seem strange to spend only one day in London, but I have no intention whatsoever of rushing to and fro from monument to monument or from tourist spot to tourist spot. No way. That just isn't going to happen. I'll probably get nowhere near Westminster. Um, but uh, I am planning on doing an awful lot of walking. I think I'll go up to some places in Highgate and some places in the East End. I, of course, <laughs> want to have my photograph taken um, beside the Cable Street Monument where uh, the <clears throat> Irish navvies stopped Mosley's fascists in their tracks in 1936, the Battle of Cable Street. But that's really about it. Um, and while I'm there, if I'm sitting on the tube or whatever, I'm going to read one or two of D.H. Lawrence's short stories. Now, all that that's really doing is setting the mood for being in London. Um, not a really rushed uh, look around the city. Most of the time, probably just walking or sitting on the tube. Um, or sitting in cafes, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing um, while I'm in Norway, while I'm in Bergen, and in particular Oslo. I'm going to be reading this. Knut Hamsen, uh, probably Norway's most uh, famous and controversial author. Um, and while I'm in Norway, I don't really have a huge amount of time there, just ten days, I'm going to be reading two novels that are set in that book that I purposely bought for uh, to, to take with me to Norway while I'm there. In other words, I'm going to get silly on my vacation, and I'm going to deliberately sort of turn London into some sort of magical place in my head, even though London can be a little bit on the grotty side by times. There are beautiful parts of the city. Uh, Bergen, apparently, is going to be overcast, drizzling, and about zero degrees the whole time that I'm there, zero degrees centig uh, centigrade. Um, so, you know, you a lot of times when you go to places you've never been to before, you show up, you think something's going to happen, nothing happens, so you end up sitting in a bar. I have no intention of doing that. I'm going to wander around the city, uh, probably with wet feet, reading Knut Hamsen, um, and um, just imagining what it must have been like to be in Bergen at the time of this author. Try and imagine, for the very short period of time that I'm there, what the Norwegian soul is supposed to be like. As I said, the whole thing is kind of ridiculous, really. I'm not going to tell anybody while I'm there that I'm doing any of this. Um, I think that uh, Norwegians do have a pretty active sense of humor. They love to giggle, um, in spite of what people think. Uh, the uh, Scandinavians aren't known for having a particularly developed sense of humor, which isn't true at all, actually. But um, I'm doing all this, and 
it's going to take the form of, in my essay, which is also coming with me, Zafi's Last Messiah, of sublimation. I'm going to be wandering around several cities, aimlessly as it were, um, without really doing much, or without really accomplishing much. But the whole time I'm there, I'm going to be deliberately sort of casting a spell over the place. I'm going to imagine, oh, there's the spot where the, uh, where the crowd of working class stalwarts, they were, weren't really that, but you know, you can play this sort of game with your mind, stopped the fascist beast in uh, the Battle of Cable Street, or um, I can uh, walk up and down the, uh, I think it's pronounced the Brücke, Brücke in, um, in uh, Bergen, and imagine, oh, I don't know, 10,000 starving Norwegians uh, making, uh, getting ready to make their journey off to America in the middle of the 19th century uh, in what was called the Great Bloodletting of Scandinavia, where everybody uh, left the country because uh, poverty was so severe, and they all went to places like Minnesota. Um, I hope that it's going to be a nice, uh, somewhat unreal trip. I probably will speak to very few people while I'm there, but that's okay. That's My nature is to be that way. Uh, I'm not an incredibly social or gregarious person. But it's going to be, as I say, a deliberate sublimation. A conscious casting of a spell over my surroundings. Um, and as I said before, I think that anyone who doesn't have that capacity is in many ways dead to the world. Dangerously so, perhaps. Because, while it is possible to put yourself into a sort of a greater state of profundity than one would think one should be in when walking up and down a dock in Norway in the freezing rain, um, it's equally possible to deliberately blacken things. If you can sublimate things, if you can turn the mundane into the sublime, you can most certainly turn the mundane into the hellish. Um, someone who does that is, if you ask me, doing the same thing as someone who is living in a sort of a deliberately vacuous fantasy. They're sort of deliberately tainting, or I would say decrepitizing, the world around them. Um, where you look around and all you see is bullshit. You go to Bergen, a place you've never been before, or Oslo, or whatever, and all you see is people who are just, you know, people are jerks wherever you go. These people are no different. Uh, it's just a place. It's a whatever. Who cares about this? Why, why should I bother thinking that there's anything special about being in Norway? I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying Norway in particular, but you know the sort of thinking that I'm referring to. You're turning everything into shit. Instead of the Midas touch, I suppose you've got the excremental touch. Um, you're turning the entire world around you into something undesirable, decrepit, lifeless, pointless, miserable, and perhaps terrifying. Um, why would someone want to do this when we have two spells that we can cast over the world? There's the positive one that Zapfi says himself openly that he engages in, sublimation. And then there's the negative one, the sneering, sarcastic, depressed, panicked, um, overwhelmed sort of feeling uh, that is just as sort of, I would say, even magical or just as surreal as being ridiculously optimistic or imagining that you're doing something profound when, in fact, you're not. The world just is. The value, and Zapfi agrees with me, is what we, in here, place upon it. We go looking for meaning outside of ourselves, we won't find it, and what we'll do is we'll see the world as a bleak, meaningless place. That's simply because you're looking for meaning where meaning is not to be found. Meaning is to be found within. Value is something not only do we uh, find within, but value is bestowed from us on 
our environment. It's not the other way around. I think that people who agree that the universe is empty are half right. There's another part of the universe. It's in here. Isn't that what philosophy is for? I think Mr. Zapfe would agree. Thank you.